Urgenja Sonsi Juxon, this is America deploys typhoon missile in range of China. Hmm. This is by Channel Task and Purpose. I've been watching this recent conflict videos a lot. I just posted sandbox video on is America preparing for World War III? Now said like they're preparing for Taiwan and China thing because China is the closest growing power that they have to like think about. And then I get this uh, you know in, uh, notification feed. It was posted more than 24 hours ago. I don't know why I got notification just now, but there you go. So typhoon missile. I don't know what this is. Have I seen a video about it? Like I see a lot of, I'm pretty sure I haven't. So some kind of a new tech that America has deployed near China. China's not gonna like that. I just I just already can imagine what kind of statements China's gonna make. Uh, something, something, something. This basically says like this is not fair type of way. So this is gonna be interesting. Let's watch it. The U.S. Army's brand new Typhon launcher hasn't been in operational use for more than a year. Typhon. Typhoon? Typhon. Okay. Year. And yet it's so powerful that it's already been at the center of a major international geopolitical crisis. Normally, you need to be an F-35 or a Patriot missile system to be at the center of such international intrigue. The whole controversy started in April 2020. Isn't Aegis better than Patriot and newer version? Or am I mis mistaking those two? 24, when a battery of these launchers were forward deployed to Luzon in the Philippines. It was their first ever major test to see how they might actually work in the field. At the annual Bailikatan joint military exercise between the United States and the Filipino Armed Forces. You see, the Typhon launcher is central to the U.S. military's evolving strategy to counter rival adversaries, which is diplomatic speak for Russia and China. And so confirming that it could actually be supported anywhere in the world is key to deterrence. So the Iran is like that, <laughs> bro, what is a Travolta meme, right? Looking around like, what, what? I thought I was part of the, you know, like enemy as well, but okay. I guess it's just Russia and China. These Typhon launchers were loaded up on a C-17 at Joint Base lewis McCord, then flown 8,000 miles to the Philippines. This was important because using a prototype Typhon launcher in a dry desert in the western Nevada on home turf is far more simple than trying to do it on a humid beachfront thousands of miles away. But surprisingly, this isn't even what caused the international snafu. What happened was a month later, after the training exercise was all packed up and finished, the U.S. military just left the Typhon launchers behind. I don't think you accidentally forget a new sense. I'm going to guess these are the Marines. Because I watched the video from Task and Purpose, I'm pretty sure, where Marines are creating this plan, like different style of plan. Pretty sure like this is the island they were like conducting exercises in something, right? So, you know, small group type of strategy there. Well, I'm guessing they are the one involved here. Sensitive item that's multi-billion dollars worth of weapon system. It's not like that time my buddy left his rifle in the woods and forced the entire unit to get online and search for the forest on their hands and knees for the weapon. This caused a huge spike in tension between the United States and China because the Typhon launcher allegedly worked too well and that meant that it disrupted the balance of power in the region. The US Army hadn't even live fired them like how China regularly live fires missiles over Taiwan. China obviously wasn't a huge fan of this move and so they complained with strongly worded language. Chinese Defense Minister Dong Jun warned that the deployment of this Typhon system was quote severely damaging regional security and stability end quote. Meanwhile the Filipino armed forces insisted it was China who was severely damaging regional security by sending their navy to shoot water cannons and harass their boats. Either way the two nations have increasingly been butting heads in the air and in the sea over contested islands off their shores and personally I think that that's part of the whole reason why the United States Ah, come on, man. If you just point blank water can Philippine boats like that with the footage out there, you can't really complain about not like regional security. This is like bully saying like, oh, you're you're like, you know, causing like, uh, you know, security and stability of this place to go haywire. What's security and stability? Yeah, my, my bullying, my power, right? I can do anything I want. That's the security and stability. Now there's another one who's more powerful than me. There you go. So, obviously, you, you don't hear about any other country's military equipment as, like, too successful. Typhoon was too successful, the China's panicking. Obviously, it has to be America. When it comes to technology, America is going to be ahead. 
because everything that is modern tech probably comes from America, computer chips and everything. States military left these systems there. A few months later, in July 2024, the United States finally announced they would withdraw the Typhon launchers and bring them back home. And we all lived happily ever after, and China ended up being the United States' best man at its wedding. And the two look back and laugh about the whole thing now. Except that isn't at all what happened, because by late September 2024, it was revealed that the Typhon launchers were still on the ground in the Philippines. They hadn't been removed. The news agency Reuters confirmed that they saw the Typhon launchers still stationed in the northern part of the country closest to China. Take a look at these Planet Lab satellite images that reveals that the launchers are still stationed at Leong International Airport. Probably the single most important part of the United, United States, States strategy. <laughs> Imagine that Pentagon calling Reuters or whatever that agency, news agency is and like, which side are you on? Why, 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 why are you shooting me in the leg, man? What, what is your problem? <laughs> in Asia is pre-positioning strategic weapon systems to already be there before war even kicks off. This is because it would take valuable weeks to fly the Typhon launcher, its crew, ammo, and the whole logistical tail into place and then set up and start firing. That's why the Philippines is an invaluable staging point if China were to ever attack Taiwan. Typhon launchers are basically the army's way of saying, hey China, it's a nice network of anti-air batteries you got there. Would be a shame if someone cruise missiled it. A senior government official spoke to Reuters and gave them some insight into what's happening, saying, quote, if ever it will be pulled out, it is because the objective has been achieved. We want to give them sleepless nights. If you really wanted to give China sleepless nights, all you had to do was send them a bunch of my pillows. So if I were to put two and two together. They're point blank saying that, so like, yeah, it's not gonna be removed. Oh, by the way, we, we, the plane that can carry it, like, we forgot the keys of that. Those planes don't have keys. Like, ours won't do. Shut up. We'll get it when we get it. <laughs> it sounds to me like the United States is using these Typhon launchers in the Philippines as leverage to try to get China to stop aggressive actions that they're taking against the Filipinos. Further evidence of this comes from the fact that the Filipino government is even trying to purchase the system from the United States so they can keep this capability there in their homeland. There are even reports that the United States military is now thinking of deploying the Typhon launcher to Japan in the near future. The reason is because the U.S. Secretary of the Army, Christine Warmoth, said, quote, and so to your question about where might they be stationed eventually, I do think that in the theory of multi-domain task force could have great utility if it were stationed in Japan, for example, or perhaps in Australia. But first and foremost, Japan, end quote. So one thing I think to look for in the coming months and years is for signs of the U.S. trying different tactics to get them to Pacific, whether it's letting them fall off the back of a truck in the Philippines or selling them on Facebook Marketplace to anyone in Japan who wants to hold... <laughs> Philippines, you want to buy Typhoon? Based on how much it costs? Just a dollar? Just one dollar. There you go. Oh, wait, there you go. We officially sold it sold in there. China is like, why is there still Typhoon missile there? Oh, we sold it to Philippines. It's not ours. We sold it for dollar here's, here's a receipt hold on to them but what is it about these new weapon systems that makes all the allies want it and it's getting chinese communist party all hot and bothered it's because it can strike between 500 and 1800 kilometers the distance from the philippines to mainland china is about 750 kilometers while the distance to the taiwan strait is roughly 650 kilometers have you ever had a pesky target that you really needed to hit, but it was too far away for your attack a missile, and you're trying to save your stockpile of long-range hypersonic ammo for a special once-in-a-lifetime high-value enemy? That's what the U.S. Army's new Typhon missile launcher is for. It's the Goldilocks of missiles. Each Typhon battery consists of four launchers called payload deployment systems. Each has four cells. This gives them 16 total rounds at the ready, which can be a mixture of your Tomahawk and SM-6 missiles at once. You also need to bring along the BOC, BAC, the Battery Operations Center, which is basically a shipping container with air conditioning and internet access where all the actual controls are contained. Don't even ask me what they're doing over at the Command Operations Center. 
each battery will receive a reload trailer and support truck to keep operations running smoothly. It reminds me of the mobile classrooms that my public elementary school bought to handle the overflow of extra kids. Except the Typhon launchers teach actually unforgettable lessons. Given that they can fire so far... I don't get it. Uh, so, there, uh, why is this special? Like, didn't there was already like uh, mobile like uh, missile launchers and things that had that has like a long range? Or well, this is like really revolutionary? Somebody comment down because I'm really blank on that. I thought that was like, you know, mobile launchers was already a thing with, uh, you know, like uh, long distance uh, missiles and shit. I don't know. Maybe it's the distance that is like important, right? Or you can't just rely on some high speed artillery spotters to see the target for the Typhon. Instead, you'll use a system called the Extended Range Sensing and Effects, or ERSE as the company calls it. Let's call it that too because I can only fit so many military industrial complex buzzwords into my mouth at one time before I start to gag. <laughs> my old squad leader used to always tell me that I had a very sensitive gag reflex. These new formations combine drones, spy aircraft, and real-time satellite imagery in order to identify targets on the ground. They even have a dedicated surveillance balloon section. I want to see what that unit patch looks like. All these create what's called a kill web with hundreds of different types of sensors communicating with each other at different altitudes in order to find, track, and kill those targets. In operation, the ESER comes- Yeah, but what about jamming? If you have that many elements into your like web, let's just say, isn't like if one goes like the whole web collapses type of way? Uh, one thread goes away and the whole web gets repelled, basically jamming of any, like how good it is against the jamming, that's the question. Like I'm all for like complicated systems like that, like F-35, how they are built to basically communicate with everything, this thing with communicate, with, that's what America is doing in future. Uh, one thing that communicates with everything is just like seamless and efficient. But of, what if like it jams even one of the things, like does everything collapses or they, does it have fail safe or something? company would send out dozens of intel assets prior to a large-scale movement of friendly forces, finding targets that could do some long-range damage to our troops on the ground, and sending that info to the, you guessed it, Battery Operations Center, the BAC. Ballistic launch points are pretty easy to spot once they get firing, so the ability to fold everything back into a Hemet trailer and gun it down the road is one of the main appeals of this system. Well, that and shooting tomahawks. Once the initial breakthrough is made against a defensive barrier, then the Typhon launcher can be put to work maneuvering forward with the rest of the formation. It's a multi-domain weapon system, which means it can engage enemy ships in the sea, aircraft in the sky, command outposts on the land, and critical infrastructure from a distance. And here, this is what's really key, I think, is it does this without relying on air superiority to do these things like the United States military did in the past. Air yes, superiority- If it's that good, why not just litter the place with Typhoon uh, systems and just overwhelm everything? Because basically it takes care of everything. Literally nothing's that ship, airplanes, like distance, like uh, objects basically implying like missile silos and shit like that. That would basically like disable everything, so just litter the place with that, why not? Party is like having a nice safety net. It feels great when it's there, but you better learn how to fight like hell when it's not. But there's actually a lot more to this launcher than you might think. First, we need to address the elephant in the room, because I know what you're thinking, and I was thinking the same thing. Cappy, are you sure it's actually called the Typhon and not the Typhoon launcher? Fair question. I've been known to mispronounce a name or two in my day. I'm pretty sure, ty does Typhoon have double O because it sounds like Typhoon, so this is as one O, right? I don't know. And admittedly, I've gotten confused before in the past and called it Typhoon launchers in previous episodes. But this launcher isn't named after a strange word for a hurricane. It gets its name from the Typhon monster from Greek mythology, which was described as being a giant dragon with 100 heads and snakes for legs, which if you ask me is way cooler than a big storm, but that's just me. These launchers Ooh, at the- Oh, I remember that. Typhon, yeah, Greek mythology. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Did, did OSP cover it? I don't know. But yeah, and I was, like, I remember thinking, like, wait a minute, Typhoon is named after that or something? Because that would make sense, right? But so Typhoon is just like, uh, uh, same as Hurricane, but something that's been the other, other side in the other part of the hemisphere, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's like two of them. One spins this way, another spins the other way, and that's named differently. Right, like cyclones and typhoons, basically the same thing, but it spins diff I'm pretty sure that's the case. I could be wrong. 
their core are platforms for yeeting missiles off of a truck. And the major change here is that up until now, that could only be done when it was fired from the Navy's fleet of ships. Naval fire is great, but it requires a ton of joint service coordination, isn't super reactive to changing situations on the ground, and they're usually limited to targets closer to the shoreline, not to mention that giant boats in the middle of the ocean can make pretty big targets. The design of the Typhon started around 2020, and it came out of the Army's $404 million mid-range fire systems program. According to a congressional report from April of 2024, the Typhon program started after it was determined that that, quote, reported improvements to Russian and Chinese artillery systems present a challenge to the U.S. Army, end quote. The U.S. had munitions that would be able to take out these targets, but they were sitting in the Navy and the Air Force stockpiles, and that wasn't good enough for the Army. Two missiles were selected for testing, the infamous Tomahawk cruise missile and the SM-6, also known as the RIM-174, in use by the Navy. In fact, you might recognize the Typhon because it's... Wait a minute. <sighs> I'm surprised all the time, like, I didn't know this before, but people told me, like, how different arms of military acts differently. This is basically that. Navy had it, but Army wanted their own thing. Is that it? And, uh, you know, I realize over time, like, how difficult it is for Army, Navy, Air Force all to work together. And if, if a country has something like that, basically what U.S. and everybody just seamlessly work together, that makes them really powerful. Because in the past, that hasn't been the case. Right? And I always assume, like, come on, man, that can be it, right? But apparently that is. Sort of a ground modified Lockheed Mark 70 mod. The Mark 70 Mod 1 takes missile tubes found on Navy ships and crams them into a standard shipping container, so you can slap them just about anywhere. This is why the Army was able to deploy these things so quickly. According to Lieutenant General Robert Rash, a senior officer at the Rapid Capabilities and Critical Technologies Office, the Typhon, quote, progressed from a blank piece of paper in July of 2022 to the soldiers' hands in just over two years, so soldiers can begin training as quickly as possible, end quote. The first four prototypes were delivered by Lockheed in late 2022, and by June of 2023, the Army had successfully completed a test fire with a Tomahawk missile out of the new launcher, declaring it fully operational less than three years after being dreamed up. For reference, the development of the Pizza MRE took over 10 years, although as an Italian, I can confidently say it ended up tasting like a war crime. The two missiles being used, the Tomahawk and the SM-6, have ranges of about 1,000 miles and 310 miles respectively. But the important question is what kind of firepower is being packed into those bad boys? Tomahawks typically have a payload capacity of 1,000 pounds, but have a couple of different variants that they'd be using. The SM-6 is a bit more interesting of the two because it can be used for a different number of target categories than just targets on the ground. These are about as close to an anti-everything missile that the DoD has in its stockpile. Originally designed for longer range anti-air targets like planes and helicopters, it can take out anything from drones to incoming ballistic missiles and even naval ships as a secondary role. Similar to the Tomahawk, but at much higher speeds and with a smaller warhead of only about 140 pounds. So the Tomahawks are meant for the larger, generally stationary targets. Think of your buildings or large fortifications and the SM-6 for smaller targets of opportunity. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How did it make this system in just two years and by three years it was already deployed? For military, that is an insane level of speed. Which basically confirms what I always assumed. Like, America takes a sweet time basically, but if it wanted to, it can speed up the shit really fast. Like, if like they, they realize like, okay, imminent war is just there. Like, they could like speed up shit really, really fast. Like you know, like, trim down the time, like, anything, oh, it will take 10 years, by the way, war is very near, trim that down, and they could just make something in 2-3 years, might not be as great as 10-year thing, but close to it or something, and that is insane, yeah, the SM-6 one, I mean, I just assume, like, oh, it's just, like, okay, small one with a small range for whatever purpose, I didn't know it was this versatile, so everything that he said, like, moving targets, like, ships, planes, uh, basically anything can take out, it's from SM-6, well, Tomac is obviously stationary, big target thing. So Tomac isn't that impressive, SM-6 is. So basically, if they're like 16 mi missiles, so if they like stack up 10 of them as SM-6, like there's 10 targets one system can take out at once. Like could be anything, so a few planes here and there, a few boats here and there, maybe some target on the ground that is moving. That is some tanks or something. That's an insane amount of power.
opportunity like mobile command posts or high payoff targets like missile emplacements. The SM-6, the US Army just decided to start producing 500 of these a year. And the latest version of these, the SM-6 Block 1B, are hypersonic versions, meaning they can push over five times the speed of sound. One of the main reasons the US Army hasn't had this capability until now was because the kind of weapon system was literally illegal. In 1987, the United States and the Soviet Union signed the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces, or the INF Treaty. This banned the designing or possession of land-based missiles that had a range of 500 to 5,500 kilometers. In 20... Yeah, but it's nuclear. This is not nuclear. Isn't that a loophole? In after seeing Russia literally could not be bothered to follow the agreement, since they were developing their own ballistic missile arsenal, and China never even signed on to it, the United States decided, you know what, we're pulling out of this treaty. This had the collective effect of making every defense company start drooling when they read that headline. So how does this stack up to Russia and Chinese equivalents? Russia has been fielding its medium range ballistic missile, the Iskandir, since 2006, but we haven't really seen them in full operational scale use until the war in Ukraine kicked off and then we started seeing them being used. These hypersonic missiles have a range of about 500 kilometers and it has a 1,700 pound warhead. After a few months into the war, Ukraine had begun developing successful strategies to intercept them, forcing them to start firing twice as many missiles in the hopes that one would pass through. These lack the pinpoint accuracy of the RM6 or the Tomahawk, hence the need for a heavier payload capacity, because Iskandirs are said to hit within 50 meters of your point of aim, whereas the Tomahawk can hit within 10 meters. Point is, the Russian Iskandir is a formidable weapon system, but only insofar as Ukraine lacks the ability to shoot them down. However, China's ballistic missile arsenal is a bit more robust. China's equivalent medium-range ballistic missile is the Dongfang 21C. It's been in service since 2006. These have a long range of... The whole of the 10 meters versus 50 meters, right? Uh, a meter is like 3 feet. So 50 meters would be like 150 feet of diameter or anything close to it. 150 feet feet uh, isn't that big of a number when you like imagine that right like if you're on ground with 100 like whatever right so if if the payload is high enough does that even matter like is it 10 uh, 10 meter or 50 meter that's not that much for that big ass of a missile what am i overestimating how much damage a missile does i'm pretty sure the kind of big ass missile that fits behind a truck probably would have like much higher damage i don't know an estimated 1,100 miles, but they have pretty awful accuracy. And so on average, it'll be off anywhere between 50 and 100 meters. I may not have shot expert back in the day, but at least I didn't miss by a literal football field length and distance. They also have one major disadvantage. They can only be fired from prepared hard surfaces like a road or specially built launch pads. This is because the back blast from the missiles sends dirt and debris flying out so fast that it'll literally kill anyone around it. Firing this thing from a gravel patch would be like setting off a giant frag grenade. This means that anyone with access to Google Maps on their phone could spend a few hours and identify literally every spot that this thing could be fired from. The DoD needs to hire one of those geoguesser guys and it would probably take all of 10 minutes. The US Army is revolutionizing how they fight by organizing into five multi-domain task force, three of which will be deployed to the Pacific, and a key part of this new unit will be the Typhon launchers, which tells me that one way or another, the United States is going to deploy these things to the Pacific, although, like how I mentioned earlier, we don't know exactly where in the Pacific yet. All of the stuff that goes kaboom will be found in the Strategic Fires Battalion, which will consist of a HIMARS battery for those shorter ranges, an MRC battery where the Typhon will live for medium range, and then you got the long range hypersonic weapon battery for those tough to reach spots. The Army is currently requesting 183 million bucks in research and development funds and 233 million in acquisition in order to continue testing the Typhon and building up batteries inside the multi domain task force. So far, testing has been so successful that plans are already set to have five batteries fully operational by 2028, and signs are pointing that the Fires Battalion will increase the number of Typhon batteries to two or three each.
Sensitive high-tech systems like the Army's new Typhon launcher are vulnerable to cyber attacks, which is why the U.S. Army created a whole new MOS, or job, called 17 Echo, Electronic Warfare Specialist. And it's not just the Army. Look at how the entire civil industry has been kicked into overdrive to help protect their new digital front line. And that's why I want to tell you about this video sponsor, Pluralock. Pluralock actually works with each branch of the United- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, for a second I'm like, what the fuck, where is the sound coming from? I panic, is, is it my mobile or something? Well, it's an ad. United States Department of Defense to help protect against this new cyber domain of warfare. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about them. Because Pluralock serves high profile clients and federal agencies like the US Department of Treasury. In fact, they were just awarded a $6.16 million contract there. So the company has been awarded contracts by more than 30 different US government departments, including NASA and the Department of Homeland Security. What is Pluralock? They provide IT solutions for cybersecurity and software engineering around the globe. They've been able to combine their technical expertise to deliver incredible cyber defense solutions. We fought on the ground, sea, air, and space for the past 50 years, but now there's a new domain fast growing. Cybersecurity Ventures predicts the price tag of cybercrime and its damage will reach $10.5 trillion annually by 2025. Just to put that into perspective for you, if cybercrime was measured as a country, it'd be the world's third largest economy after the United States and China. Cybercrime needs to chill out. We saw what happened in January 2022 when Ukraine was hit by Whispergate, which was a malware aimed at dismantling their critical infrastructure, disrupted their community. Yeah, I was about to say it's mostly Russia and China. Russia, I think, with the cyber attacks, right? They are really good at cyber attack, apparently, or they are the one who does the most because I hear about Russian cyber attack all the time in US election, this and that, everywhere, basically, right? What was that like recently Windows had an issue, right? Like what was it, a blue screen day or something? Was that an attack or was that a fault from Windows? I don't know. But basically, yeah, cyber attacks are intense. Communications disabled their power production, attacked banks and supply lines, and confused their medical and emergency response teams. To me, this highlighted a critical sh Yeah, people, uh, go to original video page and from there support this channel. <laughs> Apparently, like, you know, like defense companies and military level things are sponsoring his channel. That's how big he has gotten, right? I was surprised when I wait a minute. This is proper government who's like sponsoring it. Like, wow, that's big. But yeah, <clears throat> so Typhoon system is in insanely powerful. I can see why China panics, right? Uh, so yeah, if, if you like deploy a ton of Typhoon launcher there, like slip it in without anybody noticing, that alone is powerful enough to like stop an invasion in the scale of like Taiwan invasion or something. And one thing we notice like if you thwart uh, an attack very early on, that will have like a, this kind of like a domino effect going forward that that will just hinder them. Morale based, psychology based and not to mention their whole plan goes out of the window. That's what we've seen in the Ukraine. So if like uh, Taiwan attack does happen, and US does intervene instantly with these kind of technologies and things like just thwarts China's plan in first few days that basically near guarantees that that, attack, that war is gonna fail from China's side I guess so yeah I can see why China panics uh, but yeah knowing China they will try to make similar system like this very soon uh, how good that will be who knows but yeah Right, well, that was America deploys Typhoon missile in range of China by channel task and purpose. If you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.